go. Hello, everybody. It is Saturday, January 15th, 2020. Um, my name is Nevea Chanel, and I am here co-hosting. We have Allie that's going to be joining us here shortly. And today's guest, we have Miss Amanda Woodson. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. Like, uh, let us uh, embrace all of your greatness, or obviously is a reason why you're on our show today. Tell us what we're here for. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I am actually a stay-at-home mom um, of five kids. And well, four now, one of them actually just moved out. So um, I do have five kids and I'm actually a photographer. Oh, yeah. excellent. Yeah. So how long have you been in photography? Well, it started out as a childhood passion fun. Um, I started out like just taking just fun photos as a kid with those disposable cameras. Um, but actually like in the actual career industry, um, I got my first camera back in 2015 and then I made my business an LLC in 2019. So yeah. Excellent. Thanks for joining us, Allie. Nice to see you, dear. Yeah. Thank you. Kick me out for a second. No. Um, so off camera, you did mention that your primary form of photography is boudoir. Um, do you think you could elaborate on that and like what it means per se? Yeah, so boudoir is actually a French term. Um, let me, I should probably look that up beforehand, like what exactly the term and stuff like that. But it's about, uh, boudoir is about women empowerment. Um, so it's usually it takes place in a private setting, whether it be in studio or a woman's home uh, or a hotel room um, or even outside, you know, depending on weather, obviously today's weather and stuff like that, because we got a little bit of snow. Um, you know, some women do like um, the cult and stuff like that, but generally it is about women empowerment, just bringing out the sexiness and uh, also the vulnerability of the woman's side so as a woman we are uh, we have a lot of complexes so it's about just embracing those complexes and being able to um, share those with yourself with your photographer me mm -hmm. uh, and you know with whether it be like your friends or your spouse or you know um, with the world yeah so, that's um, a very beautiful message. Um, I definitely appreciate that too, Amanda. As somebody that's an art nude model, I do a lot of boudoir work myself, and I've been in the industry since uh, 2011, uh, so okay. a little over 10 years now. And nice. boudoir is one of those introductory um, uh, types of photography that kind of gets you really comfortable in your own skin. And it does require a level of vulnerability as well. Um, exposing yourself to a certain degree to someone that's maybe not a partner or a friend or a family, you know, a photographer in a photography setting, you know, and it kind of places that, um, that vulnerability on the client, but at the same time, that outcome, when you walk out of that shoot, you are walking out feeling sexy, uh, you're feeling confident, and you're right. beautiful in your own skin. You have a whole different pep in your step. Amen. I've honestly seen so many women, they come in uh, crying, you know, I had one woman who she actually, um, she found out that her fiance was cheating the night before and she was going to cancel altogether. And her best friend was like, girl, you've got to go. Like you've got to go. You need this. Cause originally it was going to be like a wedding gift for him. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So her best friend was like, girl, you got to go, let's go. And so her, she texted me and she was like, Hey, can I bring a friend? And I was like, of course, like, I believe, um, you know, bring another friend, you know, you can never have too many hype women, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, she came and she cried and I was like, okay, look, like, let's get your makeup fixed. Let's get your hair, you know, fixed. Cause you know, she's crying. She's got her makeup running. And it turned out to be one of the greatest sessions. Um, and she has actually moved on from that loser. 
and she's now in a happier relationship, <laughs> uh, not only with herself, but now with um, another significant other. I love your cat. Oh, <laughs> so sweet. Oh, so, she's so happy because I, yeah. and I know too, having that support on set, and I know you can relate as a photographer, having that support on set, especially if it's your first photo shoot of any kind, you know, it kind of uh, provides right. a sense of comfort and kind of lets you uh, kind of loosen up a little bit more than you would be maybe perhaps if you went by yourself. Oh yeah. Oh I yeah. strongly encourage escorts on set every time because it's just sure. about that part of your personality. So that's excellent. Definitely. Go her. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. No. Um, yeah. I, so I model full time. So I actually completely understand the level of like comfort that you need to have on set because everything shows on camera. Mm -hmm. Like you cannot hide a single thing. You cannot hide a single emotion. So right. just having that like positive energy and female energy is so important. So I love that. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Are there other types of photography that you like to do aside from that? Yes. So my business name is actually AWOL Photography, LLC. Um, and AWOL stands for all walks of life. So from pre-life, you know, so newborn or I'm sorry, maternity in the womb um, to even, I haven't actually done post-life, you know, like um, a funeral or um, like a hospice care or end of life uh, journey or anything like that. But, um, you know, just anything that's in between life and death, I, I am for it. You know, um, anything that is, you know, empowering and beautiful and gracious, um, because life, even when it's not beautiful and it's not gracious, which it can be all the time. Um, I, I am there to photograph it. So, um, you know, anyone's journey that needs to be told or shown or captured. Um, I, I love to do that. So, yeah, I mean, I also do, um, I mean, specifically my website does, um, state for maternity, newborn and fresh 48, which is probably another one of my favorites just because the babies, um, you know, they're just so tiny and so cute and they smell so good and they're just, oh. Oh, I just can't. I just can't with newborns. They're just my favorite. So <laughs> um, I actually have five that are being born right now. Three of them are here and I'm waiting on two more to be uh, introduced to the world. Oh, so exciting. yeah, yeah. Uh, weddings and engagements, uh, just regular portraits. So, and then of course, Nice. I love yeah. the overall message that you spread through photography too. And I noticed on your site that you mentioned that you use it as a form of communication. So yes. do you think you could elaborate on that? Yeah. So um, just, you know, photography in itself, they say a picture tells a thousand words, right? It's, it's worth a thousand words, probably more, because if you go out and you ask, you know, a hundred people, they're going to, you know, some of them might give you the same thing, you know, the same answer. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's fun. Oh, it's, you know, it's inspiring, but, um, you know, you do get a different message per image, you know, um, my most, one of my most recent, um, was a newborn and her mom and dad actually met through basketball and, um, through a traveling rivalry team back in 2017, and I was actually able to photograph her into like a little bowl with a basketball next to her. Oh, <gasps> well, yeah, it was so sweet. So sweet. sweet. That's on my Facebook page. So I haven't yet got to upload it to my actual website, but it is on my Facebook uh, business page. Um, and it was actually a digital backdrop. So I'm pretty handy with like Photoshop and blending and the compositions and stuff like that. But you know, every picture does tell a story. Um, that one is probably one of my most favorite just because of the love story behind it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they met at a rivalry game and then it turned into a love story. Yeah. <laughs> Happily so, ever after. <laughs> right, like at its, like literally at its finest, at its finest. So, mm -hmm. and this little girl is so 
so sweet. Oh, she's just, she's perfection at its finest. I have a question for you. As somebody that is normally in front of the lens and compared to behind the lens, yeah. um, I know that, you know, it really takes a collaborative effort on behalf of the, the model and a photographer to create something beautiful. And yes. I know that as a photographer, I mean, as a model, you know, you gotta know your lighting, you gotta know your posing, you gotta know these things. And as somebody that has hourly rate for hire, you know, those are things that come with the skill set and come with the hourly rate. Now, my question for you is, if you're dealing um, with maybe a new client or well, oftentimes maybe a boudoir, uh, somebody that's never been in front of the camera before, how do you assist these people with doing the model requirements on their side of things and assist in the photographer requirements to create that magic on scene? Yeah, I love that question because honestly, I get a lot of newbies uh, and they're actually my favorite because I get to pop that cherry, so to speak. Uh, just because, you know, a lot of women or people, even like families, um, I'll just stick with boudoir and, and specific for this, um, question, just because it is the most vulnerable that you get, you get, you get your hair done, you get your makeup done, and then you undress yourself, <laughs> then you're in front of a camera, you know, uh, which having like this big lens right here in front of your face, and then this person, even whether you know me or you don't know me, um, it's, very nerve wracking, you know, I mean, undressing in front of a mirror alone, you see your flaws and all, and you're like, oh, girl, you need, you need to work on yourself. <laughs> but for me, um, I am your number one hype man. You know, I will, uh, if you hate your waist, I will, I'll try to help you hide that you know, let's prop that leg up, you know, like when you're laying down, let's, you know, prop this leg up here. So then it rounds everything out. And it, you know, what do you like? Do you like, you know, your breasts more? Do you like your face more? Do you like, you know, like tell me something that you would like to accentuate. Um, so I actually do have a, um, a sheet that I can, that I do send out. Um, it's actually new and kind of in the works. So, cause 2022 is bringing a whole new um, era, so to speak, to uh, my business, which is really fun and exciting for me and probably my yeah. client. So um, yeah, I do have like catalogs and stuff like that, that um, kind of prep guides that will help a woman um, or family, whether it's boudoir or not, um, to, help prepare themselves uh, because, you know, there's a lot of people who haven't ever taken their photograph before, you know, even, even a selfie, you know, I know I get that way. I get in front of my own camera. I'm like, and then I look at it, I'm like, Oh God, no, I'm not <laughs> delete. So um, just being able to help, help you see your own, you know, beauty, um, is really important to me, you know, because whether you are, um, you know, you're five, two, a hundred pounds or you're six, one and 300, um, to me, it, it doesn't matter whether you're on one scale or the other, you know, one end or the other, um, you're beautiful. And I have photographed people of all sizes, all shapes, um, all races, all genders, and it does not matter to me. I will, I will hype you up. And when you leave, I expect you <laughs> to be walking with a whole other pep and you know, you're stepping in and you're not, I didn't do my job right. Yep. I, did, uh, yeah. I did not do my job right. And we need to do it again, you know, <laughs> if we need to. So, uh, prep guides are really good. And then, you know, just, um, being able to in camera, you know, while we're there, we do take a lot of breaks and we laugh, we giggle, we make jokes. Um, we can trash talk if we need to, you know, just like the one female who came in and she was um, a blubbery mess. Um, but, you know, she left and she was like, I am so glad that I came today. And I'm like, girl, me too. Like besides the business aspect of it, because like for me, sure, while you're there, it is a business aspect, but like, it's not, it's not just business it's about empowering and building each other up because we're hard on ourselves so absolutely absolutely yeah. I think that's something that's commendable too is that you kind of take that extra step 
to ensure that comfort and then, uh, you know, and reinforce that vulnerability that's in play there to be able to create that beauty in front of the camera. Um, Absolutely. As far as like, let's say, hypothetically speaking, I hire you, I want to do a boudoir shoot. What should I expect as far as the package, um, as far as, you know, what's included? Um, you know, what kind of images I have to get back and uh, what kind of people am I be working with on set? So generally on set, it's just me. Uh, I like to bring, you know, a hype person. Um, I try to ask, like, if you're good, if you bring a friend, it'd be another female friend. Uh, just because, um, I don't know, female to female, like, you know, just the embracement of that. Um, a lot of males or significant others, they do generally like to come and just kind of scope out the area and make sure that like, <laughs> you know, there's no uh, kidnapping that's going to happen or anything like that. So, um, and then other than that, it is, um, you know, I do have all my packages on my website and they're very straightforward. Um, some photographers don't put out their pricing and stuff like that. I do. Um, the only one that I, the only price that I don't have on my website is my boudoir. Um, and the package actually starts at 250 and that covers everything, images, did images, um, the studio location. So I don't use my personal studio. I actually have another location that I use in Mooresville, Indiana. Um, or like if it's a hotel or, you know, your home, which, you know, I love your backdrop, your tapestry. So, uh, you know, something, something like that. So, um, and that actually starts at 250 and you get 10 images with it. Um, and then makeup and hair can also be included for an additional price. I also have a line of lingerie, not my own personal line, but um, it does come from like Cirilla's or Amazon, some wish items. Um, I, generally, I have the women bring their own, um, but I also do offer that. And I have other accessories like handcuffs or blindfolds. Um, I actually do have a sex swing. Um, so lots of yeah, lots of fun stuff to do. Um, so nice. And then, so where, so I know that you mentioned your website, is that where people can mainly reach you to book and everything? Yeah, that or on Facebook. Um, okay. honestly, Facebook is probably my biggest platform just okay. because the way that social media is, um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people, they, that's where I, mainly advertise my business. Um, but I do have a website and um, it's active and it's up to date. So Perfect. yeah, we will definitely link all of those so people can reach you. Um, and then I know on your site that you mentioned that, so you are primarily located in Indiana. Yes. And then um, you did mention that on your site that you have shot at different locations like around the world or around the country. So where have been some of your favorites like oh yes. cool, Amanda tell us I'm excited uh, so um in addition to my own personal photography business I actually contract with two other photography companies um CYS which stands for celebrate your sexy yes and Sharia Moore um so and with them and uh, just with my own personal business I've traveled to Ohio I've traveled to Florida um, I've gone to Arizona, so um, Colorado, and yeah, well, we actually drove from Indiana to Vegas, so all the little stops from here to there. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. That is so interesting. Yeah. Um, and then, so I know that I always like to know this because from like a modeling perspective, I've had my fair share of like horror stories or like funny, just yes. wild experiences. So what is like a story of yours that has been just off the charts, like insane? Or if you have any just like funny experiences? Um, I mean, I, I don't think that I've actually had any like bad experiences. Good. I mean, Good. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, I guess maybe like in the very beginning when I didn't have a clue at what I was doing, uh, newborns probably, you know, they're, uh, testy, you know, um, I did have one newborn session actually 
where we almost gave up because this this baby was just so reluctant at just giving in and giving us what we wanted. Uh, she cried for almost five hours. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Mom and dad were beside themselves and um, I thought we were gonna have to give up, you know, cause I was just like after like three hours. So generally a newborn session is between one to three hours. And that's with me arriving, setting up the transitions in between stages of like poses and stuff like that. So, but in this one uh, newborn, she, it was about five hours. And once she finally like conked out, it was the most beautiful session. It was like, it, it was just crazy. I have a question. I want to follow up on that because I've always had some curiosity about baby shoots in particular. So I know yeah. that, like, you know, they, you can pose the baby and all these cute little poses, their hands over here. Yeah. What do you do to try to get the baby to come get to sleep? First of all, is there yeah. anything additional that maybe you do to assist in that process? And two, when you're posing the baby, do you ever have difficulty waking them up when you're posing them or how do you keep them asleep and keep them in pose throughout the session? That's a great question because I'm still learning that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, how do they do this? <laughs> yeah, no, there are a lot of amazing photographers out there who are like baby whisperers basically um, and kudos to them because newborn photography is very challenging very challenging so there are some special techniques you want to make sure that the baby is well fed and changed before I arrive uh, because having a full tummy as we all know can make us sleepy and you know help us sleep better so I know I do um, and then I do wrap them up I'm actually in the process I'm um, I ordered a swaddle, which has like the, a little piece with the uh, little feet that poke out. So then, you know, the hands can be like this and the feet can be like this. And it just kind of keeps them bundled up. It's like a little potato sack, basically. Um, and that really helps bumping up the heat. Um, I do, when I have a newborn session in studio, I do bump my heat up um, probably like three to five degrees. Um, my family hates it <laughs> just because like they get, you know, burnt out, but, um, the baby obviously being nude or down to a diaper, um, they don't like that, you know? So, um, keeping them wrapped up and then also having mom's dirty laundry, like a shirt or a scarf or a hat or pants or anything like that, because when baby is away from mom, um, they sense, they sense that they don't smell mom. So having some type of, um, clothing article to put near baby, you know, as you're changing and, you know, transitioning from post pose, uh, is really helpful just because it is, they go back to sleep pretty easily for the most oh, part, good. for the most part, <laughs> you know, um, but the younger, the better. So my favorite stage to photograph them is actually like five to eight, maybe 10 days old. Um, and the only reason I say maybe is because after that, they learn that there's like this whole big world outside of like this tiny little crunched up space that they have had. Mm -hmm. So uh, they start to stretch out. They don't like to be naked as much. They don't... Um, you know, their bowels are changing even more after then. So yeah. uh, I've had plenty of babies um, go pee and poop. On... I was just going to ask that too. Yeah. I'm like, I know that comes up. <laughs> That's the horror story that I should have went with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. I feel like I'm learning so much. That's so interesting. And then, so off camera, you mentioned that you are pretty much self-taught in this. So what would you recommend for someone that's getting started in photography in general? What would you, just any tips that you have? Yeah, I actually have a friend who, um, she's actually a brand ambassador for me, um, which I have a couple of brand ambassadors who are models and um, this one particular one, she is also wanting to learn photography. So I'm not a teacher, but I love helping and stuff like that. So um, my number one, number one uh, recommendation is to learn your camera. 
Yes. So I work with a Canon. I worked with the Canon. Um, my first camera was back in 2015. That was my first big girl camera. Uh, I went all out and I bought the best one that my pocket could afford. <laughs> Since then I've upgraded twice, but, um, you know, I would just say, learn your camera, you know, it, pick a camera, do your research, pick a camera, go into Robert's camera downtown on uh, St. Uh, St. Clair Street. They actually have a whole slew of cameras that you can uh, rent and you can try out. So there's Canon, there's Nikon, you know, there's all different kinds of brands and you can go in there and you can rent them out for a day, for a weekend um, or whatever, and just kind of get your feel for what works and what doesn't. Um, in addition to that, they also offer workshops. I would also say take some workshops. So they have workshops, Creative Live Online, uh, which is a streaming. They have workshops. Those two are probably my personal favorite places um, to take my workshops. Good to know. I have, I have one more question for you. I'm just picking your brain, Miss Amanda. You're such a wonderful guest. It's 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 being here. Um, so one last question for you as a photographer, being in the industry for quite some time, you definitely photograph, like shoot pictures over lifespan and I can respect that. I can appreciate that. Um, with that said, I know you mentioned you have studio space and you shoot in the studio and, you know, outdoor lighting compared to studio lighting is very different as a yep. photographer. Would you say that you shoot better in natural light or studio light and why? That is an amazing question. <laughs> uh, my favorite is probably natural, just because, you know, the world in itself is its own softbox. So the sun, as long as you can uh, go at the right time, um, even on a cloudy day, believe it or not, the clouds are a softbox. Yes. Uh, when you have harsh light, you know, from the sun, um, or for in studio, you have lights. And when you shine it directly onto a subject, uh, you get like really, really bad shadowing. Mm -hmm. And I am a little OCD when it comes to that, especially when I started in the beginning, I was like, oh no, I can see shadows. I don't like it. It's not going to be a good picture. Um, I've learned to kind of back off of that. And with my, you know, workshops and learning and knowledge base, I've learned to just, um, accept the flaws that come with it, especially when you're self-taught, mm -hmm. you know, and you just need to kind of tweak your methods a little bit if you're going to be in studio, um, but natural light outside. It's the Beautiful. Best. Yeah. I never yeah. shot boudoir outside. You know, I actually have had one session where we did it. Yes. Uh, it was so fun. I started out at her house. Uh, she's actually the reason I got into boudoir. She is, uh, an amazing woman. It's actually my best friend or my husband's best friend's wife. So, um, yeah, so she's my best friend too. Um, she wanted to have a surprise for her husband. Uh, and it was just like, that's what like got me into the boudoir industry. So it was her birthday and we had so much fun. She baked cookies naked. Uh, she had a cake and she smeared icing all over herself. Wow. So fun. And then she was like, she had a pool table and a bar and she was like, you know what? What if we did pictures outside? I have, you know, this really, there's a really cool, you know, train track that's right around the corner. And I was like, girl, let's go. Like, yeah. so we. So we hopped in my truck and she was like basically naked. She just wore like this really, really big robe and she was basically naked underneath. And we hopped in, we drove around the corner and we like scoped out to make sure that like, you know, there wasn't any pedestrians or, you know, drive by cars or stuff like that. But um, it was really, really fun. So just, you know, and it was kind of I don't know, exotic just because like you're yeah. stripping and like outside, you're just like, you know, which is like the thrill of it as well. <laughs> that is so exciting. That is definitely interesting. I love that you're able to be so versatile in your photography and whether it be indoor, outdoor and the lighting, it seems like you're very accommodating to your clients and that's respectable and commendable. 
I know that we stated you're in Indiana and you said you traveled to another area for a studio. What areas is your locality and um, do you have any availability? Because I might just have to schedule me a photo. Yeah. Girl, come on over afterwards. Okay, just come on. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so I am primarily based. Um, so my, I'm actually on like the border of Indianapolis. Um, I'll give you my, my exact studio location off air. Um, I do, do, I do kind of keep my studio location private, just you know, security reasons. I mean, this is my home, this is my family and stuff like that. So um, on my business, it doesn't actually have like my studio location, but like my actual address, but it does have a general area. So um, the studio location, sec the secondary location that I use is in Morrisville because my studio in my home is actually, it's like 16 by 16. It's a pretty small space, which is good for like a small family session, newborn, just regular portraits, updated, you know, pictures, stuff like that for boudoir in particular. Um, I do have like, like a really nice field that's right behind me. So that's nice to use like my backyard and stuff but indoor studio in Mooresville it's called um the Haven Studio and it's got a couch it's got a bed it's got a bar it's got a place for hair and makeup it's got a bathroom it's got a bay window it's like everything that I want all and the possibilities are endless all, all of it all of it yes absolutely yeah so um, those are my general locations that I shoot in. Um, if it's not in the client's home, of course. So I do have a lot of women who that's what they prefer because that's where they're more, most comfortable, you know? So, and I respect that because if we can have full range of your house, like do you want to use the stairs, great. You want to hop up on the counter, which is like what my friend did, you know, on the, you know, on the very first session that I ever did. You know, she was on the counter and she was on her bar stool. She had like a pack of beer and it was just, it was amazing. Yeah. Excellent. I love yeah. that level of comfort that you provide too for your oh. clients. So that's amazing to hear. And then, yeah. so you did say Facebook and Instagram are your main forms of social media that you promote yeah. yourself. Okay. And that is on AWOL Photography. Yeah, so Facebook um, is actually, if you type in AWOL, I think you should just be able to type in AWOL photography. Okay. Um, and then on Instagram, it is actually AWOL underscore photos. Perfect. Okay. So you can yeah. also look at that hashtag um, okay. on Facebook or Instagram. Great. So, yeah. Okay. yeah, we will definitely make sure to link everything. Um, it's been amazing hearing your story today. And thank you yeah. so much again for coming on. Um, it's been great to talk to you. Thank you likewise. So, thank you. I have a one final question. Leave us off on a good note, Miss Amanda. Okay. Why should we choose you for our boudoir and photography services, maybe over other people that are in the area? Yeah, so I... Um, I mean, just kind of to wrap it up of everything that I've already said, um, you know, I love empowering women. Um, I used to be overweight myself. Um, I used to be nearly 300 pounds. I am now half of that. And yeah, and I have a lot of flaws myself. Um, so from one woman to another, um, you know, I'm here for you. And I want to bring the most beautiful side of you out. And I want you to see it. You know, we are too hard on ourselves. You know, uh, we nitpick at our everything in the world, you know, um, everything underneath the sun. So just being able to take a step back and reflect and realize, damn, I am hot. Damn, you know? I look good. Oh, I got it. Yes. You know, whether I'm, um, you know, in my twenties, I'm in my sixties, you know, I've actually shot a woman who was in her seventies and I was like, yes, girl. Okay. Like, give me your recipe because you're the woman I want to be. <laughs> so, you know, I am just, I am here for a good time, you know, while just trying to, um, empower other women. 
Excellent. That is such a great drive and a great mission. And I will be definitely uh, hitting your inbox on Facebook. And we encourage Absolutely. all of you oh. listeners, if you're, looking for some good boudoir, if you're looking for some good photography with a wholesome, wholesome passion of yes. behind that, please find Miss Amanda on yes. Facebook or on the website and get on her schedule. Thank you so yeah. much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, ladies. Hmm. Um, so now we are going to transition into more of a global, national, local news. Local um, news. So, um, Nevaeh, do you have anything that you wanted to talk about just locally going on or? Um, okay. So I got a th few things going on here. Um, first things first, uh, I will say that with the weather, uh, be cautious driving. We had some snowfall out here. And I know from my experience, Indiana and precipitation and driving isn't a great collaboration that ends up well. So make sure you're driving safe on the roads and whatnot. Also, um, we have at the restaurant I work at, I work at a restaurant called Restaurante Roma in Carmel um, and coming up on Valentine's Day. So if you're looking for a special treat or something to do with you and your significant other, definitely would recommend giving us a recommendation or giving us a shout and we can provide that authentic uh, Valentine's Day experience with the Italian twist. Um, but as far as any different local news, I am not sure of anything too relevant going on here at least, but maybe, maybe you know things that I don't know, Allie, what do you got? So I have some COVID related information, but um, it has been increasingly more difficult to find rapid tests recently with um, the spread of the new strain and everything. So just make sure that you're taking extra safety precautions. And there actually has been a new order to, um, a new option to order rapid tests online. So if that is something that you're interested in, I know that that is starting this Wednesday, but it does take about seven to 12 days to actually deliver after being ordered. So just throwing it out there, but take extra safety precautions, you know, wear a mask, all of that. So, yeah. And then on a national level, I do have something to talk about. So recently there has been um, the Glo Golden Globe Awards. And I don't know if it's been really like talked about, but I haven't seen much about it for sure. Um, so it actually wasn't on air due to COVID and ethical reasons in general. Um, but um, Oh Young Soo from Squid Game, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Squid Game, but definitely watch Squid Game. He um, was nominated as the best supporting character. So, or he was, he actually won the best supporting character. So just throwing that out there, but definitely go watch if you haven't seen. Um, also some film related information, but Unfortunately, last Sunday, Bob Saget from Full House, known as on Full House, Danny Tanner, he passed away, the age of 65, so. We can verify that, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I have for all of that. Um, and then also some film related information, but if you haven't seen the new Spider-Man, definitely recommend it. Please go watch. It's so oh, good. I planned on it. That's gonna be a good movie. I feel like I'm the one that waits until the last minute to see the Marvel movies, but it's definitely gonna be worth it. Oh yeah. I'm very excited to see it. I just haven't gone to the movies because I know people have been going in droves and I don't like being around a lot of people, so. I'm just kind of waiting. <laughs> I do have a few pieces of local news that I'd like to be able to share with you folks too of some things that are kind of going on in our inner circle area here at Circle City News. Um, yeah. We have some uh, controversy recently over being able to, um, with Congress, is looking to pass a bill. And essentially this bill would entail that uh, it's called the No Path Forward Bill. Um, senators ended up going on a no on this, but essentially, um, with it being declined in Senate, it's another day, and anything oh, can happen. Here. Only Comcast Business is with it being in Senate, this the one power. bill is no longer going to allow for uh, parental uh, uh, involvement on education things that are going on in the school system. 
uh, the bill was introduced to be able to provide more parental involvement and maybe monitoring of things that are going on in the schools. And unfortunately, that was um, not passed due to the Senate voting. Another thing, too, I wanted to bring up as well is that um, with COVID and everything that's going on with the pandemic, um, it, according to the federal website where they're posting updates about the pandemic, you can request free COVID tests. Uh, beginning accepting orders as of Wednesday coming up this year. So you can request those for free at covidtest.gov and they will be shipped with no shipping fee either. Um, so the shortages that we were speaking on earlier, this could be an option for those that are in need as well. Yes, definitely. Um, and then some global news that has been recently trending in the sports um, news has been about Novak uh, Djokovic and so if you guys aren't familiar he is actually the current named number one tennis player in the world so um, he does actually right now face the potential of the potential risk of being deported from Australia um, for being unvaccinated and may not be able to play in the Australian Open coming up. And I know that other um, world renowned tennis players such as Rafael Nadal have spoken about it and just basically been like, you know, the world is already at such risk. So let's take safety precautions and let's follow the rules um, because it is a rule that you do have to be um, fully vaccinated in Australia currently to play in the Open. So, yeah. Excellent. I'm all things tennis. I used to be a tennis player in high school. And let me tell you, that's one of those sports where if hand-eye coordination is not your forte, it may or may not be a good direction for you. Learn that the hard way. <laughs> yes, agreed. Also, right. I wanted to kind of give you guys an update. Um, I know that every time I am here on, on the show, I like to provide you and everyone of our listeners a little update on the projects that are to come. So Nevea Chanel has some things that are going on um, this month. Um, we are going to be working with a photographer out in the Oregon area um, and creating kind of a face style fantasy uh, photo shoot for a book. Um, so stay tuned for that and updates on that. Also, I am working with a photographer for either tomorrow or next week. I'm going to be traveling to Lansing, Michigan. Um, so if anyone's interested in booking, don't, get, don't hesitate to give me a shout. Um, but I'll be in Lansing creating a tarot deck um, with myself reenacting the characters and the cards. So that's going to be a really fun experience as somebody that reads tarot and somebody that is in uh, spiritual work and shadow work and whatnot. I'm excited to be able to have a deck, not only that we created ourselves, but we created, I'm on it. I'm on the cards. I can be the high priestess. I can be the magician. And it's just really cool to be able to make that personalized deck. So stay tuned for that, folks. That should be fun. That sounds really cool. I'm excited for you. Thanks. Great. Um, so I know that you have joined us. Is there anything that you wanted to put out there or talk about? Sure. Yourself? Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the bill in Indiana. I think it's uh, Bill 167 that would allow parents a lot more access to what their children are being taught in schools would allow them to um, opt their children out of certain lessons uh, and force the teachers to like publish all of their curriculum in order for parents to view it. Um, there was also a, a section on there um, where parents were, or not parents, but teachers were not allowed to teach that Nazis were inherently bad people. Um, I'm not quite sure what inspired that because I, I don't know if the people who wrote that didn't study history, um, but Nazis are bad. <laughs> so like, I, 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 I don't know why this is even a question. Um, I, I just, I, I don't personally get that, but, um, I was looking into that just here a second ago and found that they announced a couple hours ago that that bill will not be moving forward because there was 
such a kerfuffle over that portion of it um, that people really didn't like it. Hi, Harriet. Hi. I like your cats. I feel like I need to have a cat too. <laughs> uh, I have four. If you want to borrow one, you can. <laughs> yeah. Most of them like people. Nice. Um, and then do you, is there anything else that anyone wanted to add for today's podcast? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, hmm. So I know that I have, we've discussed the uh, spirituality and the tarot readings and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I do also have a spiritual business um, and it's called Simply Tarot with B. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook. Um, and right now I have some different specials going on for the beginning of the year for different readings, mediumship and uh, pendulum readings as well. And um, so I encourage people to go ahead and check out the page. If you're looking to be able to get a reading or some guidance for the new year, don't hesitate to give me a shout. Um, and hopefully a few months down the road, I'll be using a deck with me on it. So that's, that's exciting in and of itself, but don't hesitate. If you never had a reading, definitely something to consider. Um, but go ahead and give that, a, give that a check out if and when you're interested and show the support. Um, but otherwise, folks, I, I think I got everything in the locality and then, you know, nationwide news here. And we had a great guest, Miss Amanda, so that's fantastic. But unless you folks have anything additional to add here, we close our chapter. Yeah, no, I think, I think we have covered a lot. Um, so yeah, I do want to thank Amanda for coming on. We will have everything linked. And I would also like to thank our sponsor, the law office of Mark Nicholson. Um, we couldn't do this without the law office. And then we um, are also on Apple, Spotify, podcasts on YouTube, on Facebook. So yeah, definitely check us out on all of the platforms. So and if you're looking for boudoir business or you're looking to be able to get some pictures done, uh, find those links on the website. But go ahead and give Amanda a shout so you folks can create some beauty on set. And Evie, thank you again for joining us this week. I know you kind of came in a little bit later on in the show. and We appreciate you coming in and being a part. Yeah, um, no problem. But otherwise. Yeah, thank you. Um, 